the Swarth Kick Legend. Today we're going to talk about working with the Wrecking Ball Bag. So welcome to the Kick Legend where I help you athleticize your art and put arm to your fight. Here at Michigan Kickboxing Academy, finally had some time to get in the morning workout. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the wrecking ball bag, or also called the body snatcher. Um, it's a real shame Sylvester Stallone didn't put this in any of the Rocky movies because I think then we'd see a lot more of them. Uh, unless you kick low, this is almost my favorite bag to work on. So, um, for anyone who's thinking about stocking up a home gym or a small workout space, after you get one or two banana bags, I highly recommend getting one of these because it encourages different kind of movement. Um, on a heavy bag, I can hit most things uh, perpendicular to the surface of the bag. I make compromises when I want to dig in at different angles, but really the banana bag is good for straight hitting low and kicking low and medium. The wrecking ball bag allows us to hit at more natural angles. You know, I often talk about in my pad holding videos, uh, how to hold the mitt perpendicular to the striking direction. Well, the wrecking ball bag naturally does that, right? We're flush for the straights. On the hooks, what I like about it is it encourages forward momentum. So I throw a lot of hooks very sideways because I'm often thinking ear slap and other things like that. But in kind of a more boxing sport context or even in your, in your more uh, self-defense oriented arts, you often want to be able to hook with some forward momentum, not just sideways like this, right? When we're hitting the button, uh, sideways is good, but sideways and backwards is also very good. And it allows us to think about the momentum going forward, especially in more aggressive arts where we're gonna to switch to heavy tools. This bag is excellent for that because I hit with forward momentum and then I can continue moving forward as opposed to maybe on a flat surface bag where I tend to throw my hooks more sideways, it just has a different feel. Uh, people talk a lot about the wrecking ball bag as training specific skill sets. Uh, you'll often hear about working on the uppercut or working on movement, which is all very true, but also stuff you should be doing on the heavy bag anyway. So it's not that this is a specialized training tool. I think it's just less common so people have attributed special training techniques to it. Rather, I think you should be adopting all this philosophy to your heavy bag training. Uh, and again, the heavy bag allows for a couple further things such as heavy leg kicks and things like that. But basically, you should be applying all this philosophy to your heavy bag work anyway. So you don't need to think about this as special. I can use it for just basic straight hitting, very basic technique. I can use it for movement, right? The great thing about movement, of course, is I move, my fist is still gonna impact the bag perpendicularly. That's why people particularly like this bag for moving around. But again, on a flat surface bag, moving around is all the same. So whether I moved or not, I'm always making the same compromise on a banana bag. And whether I move or not, I get the same advantage on the wrecking ball bag which is why uh, if you're thinking about gearing up a home gym or something, uh, if heavy kicking is not a big thing for you or you don't have the space, I highly recommend getting a ball bag rather than a short heavy bag. Uh, in addition to working the uppercut angles, of course you have the overhand angles which are now flush as well, right? Against this surface of the bag, I'm able to hit with forward energy, uh, something I wanna think about in advancing my old pad holding is how to think about holding for overhand not just sideways but allowing for forward momentum but get to the next hold quickly something i'm still working out in my head so uh there's a lot of videos on how to work the wrecking ball bag i'll just go through some stuff that you've probably seen before but maybe incorporate some kickboxing tools in it so of course you can move here throw the double hook right I find this is really nice to throw double hook because the angle is flush on both shots, digging in and sideways, right? Kind of jab, move this way, turn and uppercut, right? That's a big one. But you can throw in your other tools, right? You can go jab, overhand elbow. Again, you're hitting a nice perpendicular surface. You can go jab, switch knee, right? This bag, if hung correctly, 
is low enough for me to work on my knees, which is wonderful, right? I can do sideways angle out diagonal knee, which I really like throwing, right? Overhand diagonal knee. So if we think about that, I'm switching my footwork as this turns into a lead overhand, so my legs are primed left leg rear for that diagonal knee. well for heavy shots. Uh, I can work kind of light combos in my speed, but where it really shines is as deep as I want to dig, this bag has plenty of mass for me to work against. So really think about taking advantage of this tool for your, for your punches and don't just think about floating around lightly all the time. Uh, to take advantage of this tool, you really want to use it for your more heavy hitting. If you do snap base kicking, or even tie kicking a little bit, you can also throw kind of the mid-level kick. Again, what's nice is the surface allows for rising energy very naturally. I don't have to turn it over sideways to hit the bag perpendicularly. And again, I can work that into my overall training set. Jab, switch, kick. Switch, kick, switch the knee, elbow. What I find is also nice about this bag is it encourages me to find the half beats. Uh, often when I'm working with a pad holder, I'll throw half beats in the air uh, whenever I see them. But of course for a beginning pad holder that can be a little distressing, a little distracting. What's nice about this is because the bag doesn't care when I find holes to insert extra strikes, I can just throw them. A uh, big one is whenever you transition the kicks, you'll find that you usually have time for one more hand technique. A uh, very kind of JKD-ish philosophy here where uh, after my right punch, throwing that left kick, relatively speaking, no matter how fast I am, uh, there's ages of time in there from a neutral perspective. So after this punch, on the switch, flip it out, eye jab, or just throw the glove into the face, which a lot of fighters do instinctively, but you can train more deliberately on the back. Right? Every time I notice a transition has taken long, I start thinking, was there a shot I could have thrown in? If I angled out and I didn't lead with a punch uh, just to get the kick, maybe I should just flick out a backhand just to blind him for a second and fill the line so he's occupied while I fill another line. So I like this bag for that because my shots land more naturally, my mind is kind of freed up for thinking about these more uh, secondary concerns. So I'm just going to work the bag for a little bit. Uh, it's not going to be anything fantastic, but hopefully you get some ideas from it. Uh, make sure you check out Michigan Kickboxing Academy. Uh, wonderful group of people here. Uh, I tend to make it only for solo time because of my schedule, which is unfortunate, my loss. And make sure you kick up, check out the Kick of Legend kickboxing app for, to help you out with your solo time. In the meantime, this is Kick of Legend. Keep your chin down, elevate your striking.